When you think about companies with healthy sales like Chubby's, Aloe, Magic Spoon, or Skims, sure, you definitely think about the great product, the attractive brand, and marketing that lifts a very heavy load, but an often overlooked secret is actually the businesses behind the business making selling, and for shoppers, buying simple. And for millions of businesses, that business is Shopify. Upgrade your business and get the same checkout as Skims. Sign up for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash manifest, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash manifest to upgrade your selling today. That's shopify.com slash manifest. Hey guys. Hi, hey, Tori. Wow. So in unison, you two. <laughs> it's kind of us. Very much in unison. Uh, very much in unison. Two peas, one pod. Thank you so much for having us. Oh my God. Thank you guys so much for being here. You drove all the way down from the city to be here. I oh. couldn't be more like grateful. Yeah, Tori, you're kind of like far. No, just no <laughs> this is far. Like when you guys said you would come down, I'm like, really? That's really so kind of you. Well, well you came like, to us a year ago. I did. And I had a great time. That's what I was going to say. You came to us. So we had to return the favor. Yeah. And honestly... Kind of obsessed with Phoenixville. Oh my god, it's so cute! Wait till we go to dinner and you guys like see the little town. It's really adorable. Can't wait. Yeah, yeah, but I'm really excited. So we have a lot to get into. I'm here with Katie and Alana, and I'm so thrilled to have you guys. They have a podcast, Best of Both Worlds, which, by the way, that name is spectacular. Thank you. How did the name come about? You know what? Thank you for asking. Thank <laughs> you for staying curious. Um, in <laughs> fact, actually, we filmed the entire first episode of our podcast without a name of the podcast. We mm -hmm. had no idea what to call it. And, you know, in typical us fashion, when we don't know the answer to something, we just take to the Internet and say, like, what do you guys think? You know, so K KB, take off. So... I actually think we didn't even like the name at first. Like we like <laughs> slapped the name on. We're like, it's fine. It'll do. But over time, it really grew on us. Yeah. Totally but I, like at first, like it wasn't something that happened. And we immediately were like, this is it. We're like, it's the least bad one. And then <laughs> honestly, no, honestly, right? <laughs> because we put something up on your Instagram. Yeah. At, at, like a box. And we were like, oh, like, what do you think we should call this podcast? And we were like scrolling through and we we're like, Ugh, best of both worlds. Like, I guess. And then we, now we love it. We realized like a month or two in that we both thought the best of both worlds meant something different. <laughs> like, oh. Alana, Alana thought it, I think, meant like the best of like work and party and like work hard, play hard. And I just thought it meant the best of like Alana's life and my life. Yeah, she took a very oh, much. And I thought it meant something. T I thought it was an homage to Hannah Montana. Oh, it is. It is. Yeah, oh, okay. At right, the end right. of the day, of course, of course, it's an homage to our girl, Hannah. Yes, for sure. But we kind of both took like interpretive <laughs> approaches to the name Best of Both Worlds, you know? I was really thinking kind of like deep and symbolic. And I was like, well, you know, it's the best of everything that we do in our lives. Totally. And it's work and all these things, living in the city. And Katie's like, I really just think it's just like the best of your life, my life. And I was like, you know what? That's, that's actually better. <laughs> so, yeah. So you guys talk pop culture on your pod. Yes, lots of pop culture. Yes. We love pop culture. We'll be talking about that a little bit today as well. Yes, of course. Um, which is like my favorite thing to talk about, but I never talk about it on my podcast, so I'm really excited to get into it with you guys today. We I can't feel like wait. you are kind of like a closeted pop culture girl. Beyond. Like you guys have no idea. I mean, you guys do because I talk to you obviously yeah. offline, um, but to like my online people, they have no idea. Because you don't even really share on like IG stories, like nothing like that. Like it's very not really. much not pop culture, but I know you to be a big pop culture girl. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I bought the new Toast stuff today. Did you guys see the new merch? Yes, the fall the collection. Autonomal, of course. I can't even say that word. Autonomal? Is that what it is? Abominable snowman? Uh, no, what is that word? Autonomal. Tori. I'm know? like on a third wheel date right now, and it's <laughs> so good. <laughs> No, I don't even know what word you're trying to say. Okay, it was this. It was monochromatic. No, no, it was no. Like autumn, that like Turdy kept fall. describing the, the. Oh wait, hang on. Autumnal. Can we talk about that? You were Turdy. Okay, listen. Wait, when I screamed her name, yes. Turdy. Yeah. Um, flashback to the Sabrina Carpenter concert. <laughs> Let's unpack. And I came from New Jersey. I I'm really going back here for you for Go. a second. Yeah. So <laughs> do it. I came from New Jersey. <laughs> Great, great I start. drove to New York for the concert because I didn't like I didn't want to have to take the train home like super late. So I was like, I'm just going to drive. So when the last song came, I was like, you know what? I got to skirt out. And you know how Turdy is always saying that she is skirting out always. one song early. And I didn't even realize that she was there. But so I'm leaving one song early. I'm like coming down this escalator and I see on the opposite side of the escalator, Turdy, Claudia, and <laughs> Remy Bader. And... There's like a barricade where I am. And so I just scream. I'm like, Turdy. 
she doesn't see she doesn't turn around she's like on her phone and the security guard like looks at me so again i'm like dirty and he like looks at me looks at her and then he taps her and he's like are you dirty and she's like yeah and then he points to me and she's like hi and i'm like huge toaster like love you. oh my god like actually shivers down my spine i was so cringy no but then she actually talked about she you talked on about the it. episode it I, was yeah. so badly wanted her to like say pop star katie tiktok like do you guys no, like, know her and i was like come on claudia like please just say, i like, would be lying if i said i i was hoping that was coming too <laughs> um but the fact that i even like got mentioned was you know yeah for me it was incredible but i'm always wanting more so of course i wish that it you know she said my name but it's fine it's fine she said you know she was cute whatever <laughs> something like that <laughs> i would say like probably 10 percent of our podcast mm -hmm. consists of us talking about their podcast and them as individuals because i'm so obsessed with claudia and and really just the family jackie like all the sisters Margo. everyone everyone just has you know a special light a hundred percent we all went to the shows this summer the live two shows of them. oh my god yeah we're actually super creepy super fans because we went to two live shows <laughs> <laughs> not on purpose not on purpose and honestly both so funny no they it were just awesome. like so fell funny. into our laps no I feel it like was the second so one. awesome yeah no but i mean when you watch like a podcast every single day how can you not have it be such a big part of your life you of know course. what i mean of yes course. like it's every single day for an hour and patreon i don't know about you <laughs> yeah no, i know of course i love the patreon i love when they the whenever vlogs. they show zach like i just love zach i need yeah. more zach anyway this is not just like a toe shrine no even though no it, like, no no it we, kind of is half the time but you guys talk about pop culture on your show yes you love pop culture would you guys say you're chronically online Yes. I'm the most chronic, like absolutely addicted to my phone. Okay. Yes. What's your screen time? Have never looked at it. Do you want to do it now? Some exposure therapy? Oh my gosh. That would be really good for you, Katie. Alana, do you want to do yours? I too? I'll do, do mine. mine too. So okay. Don't, mine I don't even know where to find it. Wait, this is, I keep doing this to Katie. When we were at the studio one time, I was like, you ever looked at yourself on Reddit? <laughs> and I'm like, no. And she's like, all right, I'll pull it up. <laughs> and like, looks it up. good though. And then before she How read it, she was like, are you sure you want to do this right now? I'm like, I, yeah. <laughs> she's about to teach a class. And I'm like, you want me to pull it up? I'm like, okay. We, she like locks me in the back room. She's like, okay, I'm going to read this to you. Wait, that's incredible Guess what it stuff. said. Wait, guess what it said? It said, um, the only reason. Uh, Tell me it's about what I eat in a day. No, no, no. It was something about oh, like we, soul cycle. It was like the instructors just pretend to be friends with her so that she posts about them online. Wait, I didn't see that. You, yes, that's what you said. Wait. Did I? Yes. <laughs> and then it said, something, Wait, what else did it say? I remember the other one. It was like, she's nice. No, and then it said, period. The only reason, the only reason the Soul Cycle instructors like repost her is because she cut, she like is, or whatever, something about how like oh because God, how I'm rude. online that they like, right? They like they pretend they're, to like me. They're clout. What is that called? Clout chasers. Chasers. Yeah, Wait, okay. Chasers. Where do I find this? Settings. Um, just look up screen time because I just looked at mine and let me tell you this. This is not good news for me. Wait, you just searched screen time. Oh yeah, yes. I forgot we could do that. <clears throat> oh, here it is. Well, here's the thing. I actually don't care. That's why I never <laughs> look it up. Not because I'm like scared of the answer, because whatever this says genuinely will not affect the way I live my life. Wait, how do I find mine? Oh. Wait, did you just do this? Yeah. Oh shoot. When I did that, mine came right up. How about that? Huh? Wait, why isn't your Maybe I'm just so not on my phone. I can't even calculate it. Wait, how about that? Maybe you can't even, maybe you weren't tracking yours. Wait, I don't think mine's on either. Okay. So oh my God. It's just, just now you. Wait, how, is this it? <laughs> Thanks to the group. Yeah. That's what mine looks like too. And then if you click that. Yeah. See, hers isn't on either. You know what guys? This is, I'm, I'm actually going to. Wait, I accidentally just turned it on. I didn't want to do that. I turned on yours too. Oh, that's fine. Do you want to share? Yeah, sure. Now, here's the thing. This is where it becomes a little bit problematic because okay. I actually have oh. a full-time job um, <laughs> besides this that we're doing here. Um, and unfortunately, I fear that it might not bode well for that. I'm going to share it anyway. Yeah. Wait. Go ahead. Mine's six hours and 43 minutes. But let's like, where is it being spent? Like how much of that is on Spotify? Maybe GPS? It's messages. really good questions. Like, Thank you. We can differentiate like Instagram, TikTok, Gmail. Like we, we can help ourselves. Okay, I'm maybe. scared. Mine I mean, says 14 hours. <gasps> but that, but it says I spent 13 hours on DSW. What? Wait. So what? I feel like something's messed up? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what? I don't know the answer <laughs> to that question. <laughs> Today, you couldn't have spent 14 hours of today on your have. phone. It's and it says 13 hours on DSW. Yeah, that, Wait, I'm cracking up. 14 hours is so funny. It's like open eyes, don't get off the phone. <laughs> yeah, just open forever. Wait, because what was 14 hours ago? 50, it's 14 hours and 54 minutes. But does it count if you're like listening to a podcast or something? It does. Because I constantly have a podcast Yes. On. No, yes. Like when I'm it working. Does. It does. Like I think okay. that contributes Alana, to it. Can you turn this off? 
Yeah, yeah, we can work on that. We can we could troubleshoot post the podcast. Okay, here's the thing. It says my daily average is 21 hours. <gasps> oh, that's impossible. No, but you I know what? <laughs> well, wait, what do you do you sleep with anything? No. Mm. I will tell you this though, when we go to 6 a.m. workout classes, I hear that girl across the hallway at a spry 5 10 in the morning playing a podcast as she's walking around the house like she's literally holding the phone like this listening as she runs to get her water and everything else like i can't even yeah. believe you have a podcast on that it wakes me up i, I can't to mention think. they are roommates as well oh, oh yes. yeah yes we are for the time being i turned it off for the time being katie's making a big move well here's the thing about that <laughs> oh no. no 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 i am making the big move i just have hit a few roadblocks in making the big move because what i figured out in thanks to alana was what I really want to do is a sublet or sublease an apartment from January to May mm. since I'm down the shore May to the beginning of September. And I'm like, last summer, I only spent two days in my apartment. Yeah. And so, and when I go home, you know, I just go to my house in Jersey and to my family. So I really want to sublet and I have a few things in the works. Okay. But, and then if I like it in those like five months, I'll sign another lease in September but I kind of want to do like a trial period to yeah. see if I'm actually going to like it from January to May. And then if I do, I'll like sign for another year. But are you having a hard time finding? Yes. Sub- Got it. But our dear friend, Katie Brennan, is helping me. She's been sending She told me, me that she sent you a list. Yeah, she's, she's, and uh, did you reach out to them? Yes. And she pointed me to some very helpful Facebook groups. So, <laughs> yay. Hopefully things are working out. The New York Facebook groups for housing are. It's like a dog eat dog world out there. Really? Right? Like, I just feel like even just overlooking her shoulder at her laptop, um, it's insane. It's, it's like posted six hours ago. Rented. I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, right. Okay. You got to jump right in. It reminds me of finding a roommate in college. That was really scary. Really like scary Like posting things. on Facebook. Hey, guys, I just got in for the fall. I'm a really normal, sweet girl. <laughs> yes. Like, I like going out, but I could also do a night in. Let me know. Well, you know, that's how we met. You two? We yeah. were roommates. Nope. And they were and roommates. they were roommates. And well, they we were, were roommates. sweet mates. We weren't like direct roommates, but we were in a suite of eight girls. Yes. No way. Two, four, yeah. And we had different like direct roommates, but who were actually best friends from high school. And I mean, we like to tell people that the reason how we met is that I walked by Katie's door and she was blasting the Wicked soundtrack out loud, and I just felt so called to walk in. This is true. If that's how it went down, um, I, I fear that the actual way it went down was that Katie walked into my room with two handles of Svedka and was like come on we're going and I was like oh my god like I, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to keep up with this girl like I'm really afraid um, I I was the one who showed up to college with alcohol and chasers no, and like the first night I was like let's go girls it's so nice to know like some things never change yeah you know and, what I mean yeah like if there's you know, one thing you are it's consistent and like yeah. we love that we love that we yes. do we love do. that so you guys on your podcast talk a lot about working hard playing hard tell me a little bit about yourself individually about the podcast and then we'll dive into some things yeah okay well I can speak on that um I think that right now in our lives especially because we live together um we we definitely live kind of a chaotic lifestyle I think I would describe it as would you agree to say the least, yeah. Yes. Um, uh, it's like a lot of planning, a lot of really impromptu events that we schedule for ourselves. A lot of, we, you know, we love workout classes, so we're doing a lot of that. We're also staying up really late and like going out to dinner and just kind of really pretty much just thriving off of like four, five, six hours of sleep a night, which is not healthy. Every day? Like, no, okay, not four. No, maybe Six on the weekends. <clears throat> maybe on the weekends. During the week, we actually are maybe a little bit more um, tamed. But I definitely think... I feel like we do the reverse. Like, we sleep more during the week and less on the weekends. Wait, you think that's reverse? I think most people sleep in on the weekends and, like, are up... Oh, interesting. Okay. Week, right? I'm going to have to start with Alana on this one. Yeah, I feel, like, I, feel like, I feel like we do a typical... Like that. I guess everybody I know, like all my other roommates from down the shore, sleep so late into the day. So like in my head, everyone else is just sleeping all the time. Oh, yeah. I get that. Weekends. Like you definitely can sleep in on the weekends. But if your friends are sleeping in on the weekends and going to bed later, they're probably getting the same amount of sleep, just different times. That's true. true. That's a good point. Well, I think maybe on the weekends, we like to kind of explore, try new restaurants, you know, hit the town. We love to dance. So we'll be out into the wee hours dancing on the dance floor. And then 
you know, the alarm goes off and we're hitting the next workout class at 8 a.m. And that's just how we're doing it, you know. Um, we've recently kind of dived into our core power um, oh, yeah. era. Talk to me about that. Loving it right Loving now. It. Yes. <laughs> There's a yoga yes. sculpt class, which it hasn't quite scratched my itch of stride the hot cardio sculpt in my head that is still like my gold it's standard for you in, in may no I, like, rachel I'm is ready actually counting down the days until i can lock rachel robinson in that freaking studio and yeah. just tell like hold like a six minute plank like no she's ready. i am literally waiting for that day um all these other classes like they're great but that is like the gold standard to me yeah. i'm so like that makes me so happy oh yeah and like even like I remember at the end of the summer, CK was doing these crazy yoga um, yoga sculpts. sculpt classes that I was like, oh my God. And like all the women in the class afterwards would like collectively look at each other and be like, did that really just happen? Like that's the reaction I need <laughs> after class of everybody being like, did we really just do that? Right. And core power is the closest I've gotten to that so far. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So you, can, so you guys are loving it. Yeah. We're loving it. I did um, yoga sculpt once at core power and i just remember doing jumping jacks in the middle of it is that still part cardio of it? burst yes. cardio, cardio burst. burst five minutes interesting not only jumping jacks but double double jacks double and then jacks. also One, two. One, two. yeah it's up and down and i learned that in core power it reminds me of like in rhythmic cycling which we obviously all do um you know w when you kind of get that vibe of everybody dropping their elbows and it's like really powerful yeah i think it's kind of the same thing of the core power community when they're hitting their sides during the jumping jacks because the the instructor actually instructs like hit it harder like every so time like, i've been there, like, ah, and, and i'm watching the person in front of me actually like whip themselves and i'm like okay wait join in like that's what you're supposed to do i noticed something else that they do when they're doing jumping jacks when they come down yeah they cross their feet at the bottom i noticed that too and i tried to do it i was like i'm gonna fall over so it was like a mix between a ballerina step and then i thought maybe it's a yogi step because that's not really no nice. I, that's not a yogi okay i don't think and then also have has anyone tried dwarf jumping jacks what is that that is when you have you're bent over so your knees are bent you're kind of in like a mid squat and then you're jumping out and in not straightening your legs and opening your arms wide that was a new step to me and actually unfortunately for me hmm. i was on the side of the room we were like i was all the way on the side of the room and we were facing that wall and of course i so you had no idea no i had no idea what was going on and and it's all to the rhythm you know and she's like come on start hitting yourself harder and i'm like somebody tell me what to do so i'm like looking around everyone's laughing i'm like oh my god please blend in um so you know what next time i got the dwarf jack no. i'll add it on deck is that what they call it i swear i, I never can't heard be right no that's not politically correct Wait. no it is it's so not <laughs> okay maybe, maybe guys i don't don't fact check me on it because i could be wrong but it was something very You're similar to that okay uh, okay you well go glenn coco yeah you go glenn coco so yeah that's about that okay i love that so let's get into you guys individually a little bit because you guys love. are obviously the best branded duo of all time but oh you God, also thanks. uniquely are so interesting the both of you um alana i actually want to start with you <laughs> okay okay so this is alana wannabe hey guys and what's she's up? gonna be and she is gonna be so if you don't know what alana wannabe is why don't you explain sure go yeah, ahead i can explain so actually, when I was eight years old, I played the lead role, if I do say so myself, a lead role, I should say, in the movie. Brag Standing about yourself. You know, I mean, I am like the center of the cover art, but it's no biggie. <laughs> um, I played the lead role of a movie called Standing Ovation, and it's pretty much become my entire personality. For the most part, I would say like 98% of the people, you know, like on social media in my life are like, just keep diving in. And then there's like 2% who are like, seriously, like you're 24 years old, like let it go. And I'm like, I just can't. I, I can't would never let, let it, go. it go. It's pretty much what I would describe as a Got low. A sorry. <laughs> oh you okay? God. Yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> my calf actually just cramped <laughs> up so bad. I made eye contact with Tori, like help me. <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. I want to be. No, no, so no. It's okay. You just want to be. I get it. There's also a lot of people who comment on like if I post a TikTok with Alana and they'll be like the girl on the right <laughs> looks so familiar like everyone is like <laughs> yeah there's like a lore about staying ovation um I would say it's like a low budget pitch perfect like very similar concept um just done at a really low budget level and um yeah it's pretty much about two girl singing dancing groups who basically compete against each other in a series of competitions. And the the lore behind Alana Wannabe is that when I auditioned for the role, 
there actually wasn't a part for a child who was eight. They were looking for middle schoolers and high schoolers. But I guess, and I don't really remember this, but I guess I cracked some jokes. I did like my own little, you know, snazzy thing in the audition room. And the director asked me to come back the next day. And I came back and I guess I did the whole thing again. And they decided to write the part into the movie. So, es so essentially... One, that's why my character is named after myself, is because it got written in later. And secondly, like my part actually adds nothing to the plot itself. <laughs> Mere humor. I don't really do anything that's like super pivotal to the, you know, <laughs> the the climax of the story. Um, but she's kind of a great time. Milana one of you is just out here trying to get famous. And it's kind of like still speaking to me at the ripe age of 20, of 24. No, it's literally the coolest thing in the world. Like when you text me, like, I don't know if you know this, but like I was a shadow I was like, no way. I know. It's so cool. So I just have to know, like you're eight years old. Yeah. Are you like the coolest girl in your school? Like for real? <sighs> you know, some might say that they, they might say that unfortunately for them. Um, I would like to think I was. I spent so much time actually like not in school that year. I was no, because you're off making a movie. I'm sorry, Hollywood was calling. Holly like Hollywood was calling. So where was it filmed? <laughs> so it was filmed partially in LA, partially in New York, and then actually there are some parts that were um, that were filmed like at parts of the Jersey Shore, which is really cool. So there's like a scene where we're on the boardwalk in Ocean City, um, which is so funny because I literally walk that boardwalk still to this day, and you know. <laughs> it's just so funny. I actually know people in my personal life who were like, we saw this movie being made. You know, so like I was funny. there when you were doing that and I just like didn't know it was you. Wait, tell them about the premiere. So Friday, July 16th, there was actually like a full song dedicated to the premiere of the movie. I won't rap it for you, but um, it's really a good jig. But anyway, July 16th of 2010 it ended up coming out we filmed it when I was eight but it came out in 2010 and they had a premiere in LA they had a premiere in New York so like my whole family we flew out to LA for it then we you know we did it in New, New York and then actually on the day that the movie came out everyone in the cast had their own premiere like in their hometown so I had one in Ocean City because at the time there was a movie theater on the boardwalk and they wrote out a pink carpet because like pink is like a real big part of the movie like the girls wear wigs and they're pink pretty much the whole time I think um so they rolled out a pink carpet and it was like this whole spectacle we filled the entire movie theater um I drove up on a limo it was like just like the craziest thing it honestly crazy. it was insane no that is so cool I know and I um I was sponsored by this <laughs> this dress brand called ooh la la and they <gasps> make all these dresses what you knew this I did not know that okay well they make these dresses I wanted an ooh la la dress <laughs> so bad oh well let me tell you this they they would like send me shipments because in the movie I happened to wear some of their dresses and then post you know for all the marketing they did for the movie they like sent me all these outfits to wear um so I wore my ooh la la dress and they got these like custom at the time it was like so in to have those high converse and they said oh, the course. high lace ups of the course. high lace ups one said Alana the other said wannabe like it was really that like is, wait so you were PR packages before oh, yeah. anyone else I I feel like I was originating the PR package. Yes. Yeah. You created influencer. That's what they say about me. I don't know. You, you know, you said it. I didn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, that was that. So you were like filming a movie. Then you would go to school and you just had to pretend to be normal. Maybe this is yeah. where the best of both worlds comes in. I think it definitely <laughs> has like a, so. a hint there for sure. Um, yeah, I would literally just not be in school for three days I would be on a movie set and actually one time my teachers at the time I think so I was in third grade so my teachers I had two they actually came to the set the one day no way yeah because for some reason I think it was like a holiday maybe and school was out and it was a Monday and I actually was filming the scene that I do in the movie where I have like a solo and it was my big movie production or my musical and uh, they they got to come and watch me do it, which was really fun. And actually, in the movie, my whole family kind of makes cameos at some point. No way. Yeah, so there's a scene, the scene that I'm talking about, um, my song, actually, my backup dancers, and you kind of get why in the movie if you watch it, the backup dancers are all firemen. And my dad and my, <laughs> all of his sexy. brothers. Okay, like, you might want to hold that thought because what I was going to say was my dad and my brother or my my uncles were the firemen. Oh, <laughs> um, 
<laughs> so can I just shut up? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I guess in a way it could have been sexy, but I fear that it was not in this case. Um, it's also child's like whatever just disregard me no it's okay it's okay um so yeah it was just really funny my sister has a speaking role she's like an MC at one of the competitions like it's just really really super funny and we talk about it like every July 16th we're like oh happy anniversary standing ovation so that is so cool yeah that's like the best fun fact ever I will say even to this day I always win two truths and a lie because when I'm like yeah I was in a movie they're literally like yeah yeah, right yeah right like your attack you do your attacks an analyst yeah you're like, a tax analyst like, like seriously please. put your two feet on the ground <laughs> like yeah i'm a tax analyst and a movie star okay yeah so now you work a normal job and now i work a normal job um i would say the movie star life was slightly better than the nine to five do you want to do it again oh my gosh more than anything in this world no way yes. she's gonna get cast in something pretty yeah, like, soon what's like your dream Fingers role oh like honestly like a sitcom okay some kind of like friends yes situation of sorts where you could kind of watch any episode and you could just like pick you could up pick up it. where you left off, really based in comedy. Um, I feel like that's you where would I would thrive, thrive, like as new girl. Exactly. It, seriously, thank you for saying that. That was really an amazing compliment. Um, yeah. So I actually did kind of give it a shot too. Post the movie, my dad and I did move to LA. So that was when for how long? Uh, six months. Oh my god. Yeah. So we did just like uh, a little bit, <clears throat> like a short. A short time there I guess and I did a lot of auditioning I had like the manager the agent I had it all out in LA and we were doing like all these auditions but the thing is my family is really big so I have three siblings and they're all older than me so we left them at home <laughs> with my mom and like I know my parents always say like at that time it was really hard because you know you just want everyone to be together and like I think if I wanted to do it at the time and be a child star that we would have had to stay out there for many years yeah. and I know my parents didn't want that and I am honestly grateful that we didn't do that either because my family's so close-knit but I feel like now it's time like I gotta get I gotta get back into it you know call Alana guys <laughs> call me yeah Katie pop star hello so if you guys don't know Katie she is TikTok queen brat summer God, thank like you. icon like I honestly think of brought summer I think of you oh my god that's the <laughs> nicest thing anyone has actually ever said to me thank you so much no you're so welcome when you think about companies with healthy sales like chubbies aloe magic spoon or skims sure you definitely think about the great product the attractive brand and marketing that lifts a very heavy load but an often overlooked secret is actually the businesses behind the business making selling and for shoppers buying simple and for millions of businesses that business is shopify Nobody does selling better than Shopify, home of the number one checkout on the planet and the not so secret secret with ShopPay that boosts conversions up to 50%, meaning way less carts are going abandoned and way more sales are going. So if you're into growing your business, your commerce platform better be ready to sell wherever your customers are scrolling or strolling, whether that's on the web, in your store, in your feed, or everywhere in between. Businesses that sell more sell with Shopify. I love Shopify. When I was selling the manifest planners, I was only using Shopify and I knew that that was the only platform that I wanted to use. And now with my guides and consulting business, my PDF downloads are also all through Shopify. It's just the easiest platform to use and I would recommend it to anyone. Upgrade your business and get the same checkout as Skims. Sign up for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash manifest, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash manifest to upgrade your selling today. That's shopify.com slash manifest. So you're on TikTok as a pop Mm -hmm. star. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be a pop star? Like, How did that come about? So I have loved pop stars my entire life. Again, harking back to Best of Both Worlds. Huge Hannah Montana girl, every Disney Channel original movie. And then from there, it was the Gagas, the Beyonce's, the, the Ariana Grande's. Ariana Grande is my like number one. Um, I just love, love, love pop stars so much. And I've always wanted to be a pop star, but I can't sing. I can't dance. I can't. Well, you could dance. She's a mover. Yeah. She's I'm a, a mover. mover. I'm a shaker. But I, okay, maybe I could, like, I could do Dua Lipa choreography. Okay. So, okay. no shade, no tape. But we all saw okay. the movie. Anyways. Yes. Would you ever DJ? 
so, so funny you should bring that up actually no way <laughs> so crazy you just said that it's so crazy you just said that are I you actually launching your dj career i am <laughs> but in the least frat boy way possible it's an, i'm not a frat boy i just like i, I bought a uh like a table like a mixer, a mixer yeah. whatever you want to call it um and i'm learning how to dj your spin classes are about to go crazy thank you um but yeah i've always just loved had pop stars so much and in such a silly way really looked up to them like I find a lot of power in them yeah in a way like like confidence and all those things so and I think that's where my love for pop culture started too because like I know every pop star there is like I just love them even like Madonna like everyone so when I was making my TikTok I was like I kind of want a name that stands out not just my regular name so I was like I want to be a pop star pop star Katie like sure and then actually after like a year of no videos going viral, absolutely nothing, only like my friends in college, like liking my videos, I was like, this is kind of embarrassing. So I'm going to change my name. And I made it something so stupid. Like even worse, it was like, I am Katie Begley. Like, <laughs> girl. <laughs> I am Katie Begley. I don't know what I was going through. And then. At least not Katie Begley official. Yeah. That's actually worse. Good point. All right, so it's okay. I think it was the real like, Katie Bagley. There's a lot worse. It, true, it could be worse. But and then I, after six months of that, I was like, okay, this is even worse. I'm going back to pop star, and because I think my mom was like, you should really go back to pop yeah, star. So I know you. she was like, it's, it's so because yeah. I think people were commenting like, where'd pop star go? And I was like, she's here, guys. I'm gonna change it. So. And it's such a great brand <laughs> too. It's because such a great brand. Now people yell your name from across the room, pop. Star. like they just know who you are because of yeah that i didn't mean to build like a whole brand around it it just kind of like no it's so happened. you and it's like incredible. when i speak about you in conversations i only refer to you as pop star there's no katie it's pop thank star. you so much i feel like that happened really over the past year oh really people started saying just pop star and now my friends say pop they're just like oh hey pop what's up no it is so fun <laughs> yeah i love it i'm i'm so here for it so yeah i started making those videos like I guess like junior year of college is yeah. when I really started making them. And then I would say what they. What year was that? Like um, timeline 2017. Wise. The summer oh. of right? 27. No. So long before 2017. COVID. Because we grew. Oh, I'm we sorry. were in high school. 2021. 2021. 2021. 2021. Oh. 2021 summer. So after COVID. Yeah. After COVID. I really started making those videos because that was my first summer down the shore in Avalon. And I was I started like reviewing ice cream and like kind of just doing silly things. And at the time, I actually was working for a YouTuber. So I was like, oh, I kind of like this social media thing. Keep in mind, my major was still interdisciplinary health services. I thought I was going to be a nurse. Um, but then I just got exposed to this world of social media. And I was like, oh, my God, like, I think I could make this happen, you know. And yeah. it was really great to learn from them. Um so after that summer, you know, I went back to school senior year and I kept the health services major. But I was like, hey, mom, like bad news. Not going to be doing anything with this. I was like, <laughs> bad news. TikTok's calling. And she's like, um, okay. okay, get a job. <laughs> like, so I ended up when I graduated getting like a full time job, not even actually in social media. It was more just like a it was just like a job yeah. for that pasta company, which was great. Um but the whole time I was still doing the social media thing and I always wanted that to be my full-time job. Um, and so a year after working full-time, I had like enough going on with social media that I was able to leave my full-time job and now I do, you know, all my own social media stuff and then consult for other businesses and help them grow their social media, which is so fun. No, it's so cool what you do and you're so good at TikTok. Like you're so... Thank you. Um... Like, I don't know how to say this, but you're like, you'll, you have no shame. I have no shame in the game. So how did the, were you always like that? Or was it something you're like, all right, this is now my full-time career. Like, I just, I got to do it. Like other people, they go into work every day. This is me working. It just happens to be in public. Like, what's the, what's the mindset? I did not used to always be that way. Like, I think I was really nervous at first, but then once I realized that I didn't care when other people were doing it. So then I was like, wait, why can't I do it? And I just felt like the payoff was so worth the 30 seconds of embarrassment, like of me holding my phone up in Target and being like, these are the best tank tops to buy. Um, I just feel like it's so like the payoff was there. And I was like, OK, yeah. if you really want this to be your career, like take it seriously. And sometimes taking it seriously is filming in public as long as you're not being a nuisance and annoying, which is what I'm really conscious of, because there's nothing worse than like getting hit by a vlogger who's just like walking and not looking <laughs> where they're walking. Um, but also I think because I grew up watching so 
much YouTube. Name drop. Like, Who did we grow up on? Okay. Like it, it's, it didn't age well. But like Shane yeah. Dawson. Yeah, of course. Um, all, <laughs> of course. We all did. Like the Jeffree Stars. But also like Remy, Alicia. Of course. Of course. Tori. Like all, just like Thank I you. loved watching vloggers, especially like people out and about. So I would. So I guess when it came my turn, I was like, okay, they could do it. Like. Why not you? You can do it too. You can do it too for a check. Like, no, 100%. So what is your content mostly about? Because I forget who you were having this conversation with in the studio, but I was overhearing it and you were saying how there's like influencers and content creators and you definitely consider yourself a content creator rather than influencer, right? Or am I mixing? I guess so. I I think I'm honestly still trying to figure that out. Okay. Because I want to become more influencer route but right now I feel like I'm more of a content creator I don't know it's like I feel like the names are always changing too Mm -hmm. like what people consider themselves but I don't a lot of people say like you got to find a niche you better find your niche like I feel like I don't really have a niche necessarily like I love to post about you know teaching spin classes working out but I also do food reviews I love sports like I'll do funny videos at games and stuff like that I think I need to do a better job of like figuring out what my brand is right now from an outside POV and tell me what you think of it too like to me you're very like Philly sure yes very sure like girl next door which I think is a great brand to have okay good it's kind of hard when I feel like I'm in it so to zoom out I'm like I don't know I just love making videos and posting them like Anything I'm doing in my day, like today I like was running on the treadmill and I was like, oh, okay, I'll like make a funny video. Like it really is. People are like, oh, how far out do you plan your content? I'm like, how far out are you planning your content? <laughs> so yeah, do the ideas just come to you? How does it they just work? They just come to me. I love like, I, I call it like my like business hour. I'll like scroll on TikTok and be like, what's everyone doing? Business hour, um, I'm cracking up. But I feel like a lot of people what I used to do which didn't really work was look at like what everyone else was doing and then try to not copy but mimic I'm like oh it's working for them it'll work for me and it was very soon that I found out that the only way to really be super successful is to do something that actually no one else is doing right so I try not to actually mimic or like find too much inspiration from anyone else because I feel like that ruins it so I'm like I Fine, my content is always better too and I'm more proud of it when I'm having fun mm-hmm. and if I'm not having fun I'm not gonna post it I'm not gonna like share it or whatever like sometimes the only way I ever delete videos is if like I look at it and I'm like you didn't you did not have fun making that or like it's mm-hmm. not something I'm proud of so I'm like uh, ew. but I don't I pretty much just post whatever like I don't really care well I think people love authenticity yeah totally and that comes across yeah I also think that we talk about this in our household all the time about these niches on social media but I feel like your niche honestly is like your personality it's not really like a specific action or activity that you're doing Mm -hmm. but it's kind of like your personality shining through in whatever you're doing oh my god that's a really good nice way to put it thank you I feel like the pop star persona is kind of like the persona of it all yes yeah I I feel like it's I it's not that I don't have a plan because I kind of have these like long-term plans and then the Mm day-to-day is kind of just like meeting that if that makes sense no it does like I'm not like tomorrow you're gonna make a video running 10 miles on the treadmill like it's just like my day-to-day and then kind of molding my life into that plan if that makes sense yeah it does and you bring up such a good point like you are just so you (laughs) if that's your brand (laughs) yeah on and off camera (laughs) on and off camera like what do you see is what you get oh that's the biggest compliment because my biggest fear is someone being like she's so different off camera (laughs) (laughs) i'm like unfortunately not like (laughs) ask my mom i can ask my mom it's terrifying when it's just me and her in the house she's like i'm gonna lose it like (laughs) please stop talking (laughs) do you have any tips for anyone that wants to get started either of you guys with content creating tiktoking podcasting anything a lot Mm. of people i do get messages i'm sure you do too people are like Like, how did you start? How did you do it? And there's not exactly like a recipe, but I will say, kind of harking back to what I just said, like post videos that make you happy and that you want to like lay in your bed and rewatch your video at the end of the night because you're enjoying it. Whether it's like comedy or like aesthetic stuff, like post videos that make you happy and that you enjoy making because that will shine through, I feel like, to audiences. I feel like consumers and people on social media have become very, very smart. You can't really trick people into liking stuff you know what I mean yeah so like I would say honestly just start posting 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 that's what I did like five 
plus times a day and eventually you'll figure it out. It's day by day too. I feel like it's interesting though, because I feel like I just honestly from us doing the podcast and living with Katie and like watching her obviously be so, so successful. I also have been like, Oh my gosh, like seriously, we can all make videos. Like there's space for everyone. Everybody jump in, but I'm honestly taking a different approach and I don't know if it's working. I have no idea. I'm really just kind of throwing it at the wall and seeing if it sticks. But I actually have found that like because I still have a full time job and other commitments, it is kind of hard to have time to make five videos a day. Three to five. Three to five. Three to five. Sure. But I find that like if I make one really high quality video in one day, that is better than making three mm. subpar videos. Now, I don't I don't think that the mathematics behind that is true just sharing my own personal journey that's that's what I'm trying out I don't know I'll let you know if it happens or not I think they're great tips yeah you know I think it's yeah. good but it just depends on the lifestyle you live too yes. you know what I mean like do you have the capacity to have things to post about three to five times a day yeah. I find that like really if I really sit down and think about it and hone in one video one to three I think maybe that's where I'm at right now one to three videos then they're just better quality because I've really like thought them through. But I also think that's the cool thing about social media is that you working a full-time job, there's that relatability factor that people look at. And then with Katie having this be your full-time thing, being able to make three to five videos, that's your thing that you're you're able to put out. So like that also is what makes social media so cool. Totally. Is that like you said, there's room for everyone. Everyone jump in on it. But what you're putting out there is going to be tailored to you and your lifestyle and then the right people that – relate to it or enjoy it will find you and follow you it's yeah. so true I think you just have to enjoy it that's the at the yeah. end of the day if you're not enjoying it 100%. it's never gonna go anywhere and that's truly what kind of inspired us to even start podcasting mm-hmm. in the first place is yeah. because we would sit in conversations together and sit here and cackle at each other and we're like how funny would it be if we just started recording it no totally and seeing what happened and we found so much success in clipping those things and putting them on social media and kind of you know, that's where we feel like we're, we're reaching people is yeah. them seeing the clips and using our audios, which is, you know, crazy. We, that the was not, audio is crazy. I know it's crazy. Um, if you guys don't know, they are the girls with um, the the rigatoni. Yeah. yeah. The, the great the great, the great, great debate. debate of the rigatoni versus the penne. Speaking of which, do we want pasta after this? I, that's Probably. always a yeah. There's a ta- like there's a really good Italian place. I know you guys also love sushi. There's a really good sushi place. Ooh. Oh, see, yeah. see, we we always sushi post pod. That is kind of our tradition. Although, like, but I, I could be swayed. <laughs> I could be swayed. Well, maybe we should check the menu and see what their vodka could, sauce is over. No, great. Because if question. it's penne, we can't trust them. Okay, no I'm offense. I'm, there's sure great establishments. Can't trust them. No, I mean there's great, there's great establishments out there, but like I just feel like in this day, I, I'm sorry, not to go into day and age. Go ahead, this day and age. Like we've all seen the penne vodka. Like we do something different. Do something different. Put it over rigatoni. Put it over like like we're talking about authentic authenticity. Like be original. Do be something original. special. Like do something different. Break the mold. Break the mold. But not too far. Like, just keep it the rigatoni. Like, that's fine. <laughs> like, don't put it over, like, an orecchetti or something. Like, don't Wait, be crazy. I feel like that would be actually good. Maybe the, with a meat sauce or something. With a meat sauce. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God, Worked for a pasta company for one year. Pasta and, like, and I'm, now I'm like, I literally think I know everything about pasta now that I work no, there No, Katie came year. over to my house over the summer to have dinner with my family. Mm-hmm. And she showed up with 62 items of sauce. Different kinds of pasta shapes. Dry, fresh. Dry, fresh. <laughs> Things need to be fridged. Like, my mom was like, had a box of raviolis. Katie's like, Mrs. Palumbo, please put them in the freezer. Like, they need to be frozen. My mom's like, okay, got it, Katie. Yep, got it. Like, it was crazy. She has such a passion. And honestly, it's inspiring, truly. It is inspiring. Passion for pasta. Maybe that's my new Instagram bio. <laughs> <laughs> for the food reviews, passion for pasta. Wait, yeah. I actually love that. Maybe that's a new cooking series, except I can't cook but it's a different oh story. my god you guys should do like a best of both worlds brand trip to italy where you guys go take cooking classes and like pasta it's a fantastic classes. idea thank you for sharing that with us it's a great idea it's incredible write the whole maybe we off. should try like a <laughs> philly one first and see if see if it works and then go to italy <laughs> well you know there is this place on our block and we still have yet to try it that what? does in yolki it's like a window that you can Wait, go that's up on to our street yes yes hmm. look it up um and you can pick any sauce and looking. it comes in a little box and they're like nice fresh they're from a mm. are they from a restaurant i know we talked about this i've heard multiple things okay. i heard it's like some like just a mom or and then i've heard it's like a chain restaurant it's like i don't really and you know. just go up pick your sauce and she makes them right at Wait, this right at the window incredible so we really have to do that before we kind of part ways yeah that's true that's true so yeah 
Well, I love talking about pasta, but I also want to talk about the shore, which there's a lot of pasta at the shore. So we can hit talk it, Bergie. about it more. Let's do it. So we're all shore girls. Um, we spend our summers down there. Now that it's November, how are we feeling? I'm depressed. Like, Depresso I'll, espresso. I'll, yeah. It's so sad once we reach this time of year. Although there are things to look forward to, like if you have the capacity to go back to the shore because the week, the Thanksgiving weekend at the shore yeah. is Rocks. so much fun. Um, and, you know, they have Christmas activities. I actually just saved a post and I'll share it with both of you about all the different activities at the shore for Christmas time. Oh, I would love that. Yeah. And I'll, I'll share that with you both. Um but, like, the fact that we can't just wake up, work out, put the bathing suit on, and get to the beach is something It's criminal. I actually can't really let myself think about it too much or I also no, I get know. sad. But I have kind of tricked my brain a little because I do this thing where I'm like, all right, it's November. It's the end of the year. Let's let's cap it. It's Happy done. 2025. Yeah, we're out. Memorial Day really isn't no, that I know, far. I <laughs> Like, break it down. Break it down. If you no, break it down. We're really close. We're done this year. Put 2024 is <laughs> in the past. We're, yeah, we're, we've moved on. Happy New Year. January to March, you just have to black out. Like, yeah, you, you have do. to seriously put your sunglasses on, binge every single television show that you can, and get through it. Once we're in April, we're there. You're, th- you're we're there. literally there. We're there. You're literally there. I know. Because you, you can honestly start going down in April. Like, I'm yes. not saying you're going and pulling out your beach chair and sitting down, but you can go for a nice brisk yes. walk on the boardwalk or you can do your shore activities and really kind of get amped up and Wait. get your house ready and everything else. Guys, good news. Great. Memorial Day this year is May 26th, which means the first, like the Friday before that, that everyone's going to be down is May 23rd. That's so early. <laughs> no, we so are early. really close. Wow. Oh, wow, guys. We made it. We, we did it. <laughs> my self-tanning would say otherwise, but you know. Yeah, of course. No, I we, actually miss my real tan. So you bad. still are tan. This is faux. Oh, yeah. I've like completely lost all of Mine my too. tan. Yeah. But like I will leave like what? Middle end of September. By the first weekend of October, it's gone. Completely Mine actually lasts gone. a long time. Well, like, you get really tan. I, I, I get really tan. Which like, is so incredible. But it's like almost scary. <laughs> well, my body is insane because but I get so pale mm. in the winter like my body has the ability to be translucent mm. <laughs> and to be two opposite ends of a very drum. very tan color like I think it's because like I think I get the paleness from my mom and the tan from my dad so like I'm I'm just on a spectrum yeah a broader a broader array yeah I can I can get really really tan so if someone were because a lot of people that listen to my show and your show. I'm sure they hear about the Jersey Shore mm. all the time. They sure do. If you are from this area, you get it. But there's a lot of people that aren't from the area that listen to the show. So I really want to paint a picture to them. Like, what is the lore of the Jersey Shore? Especially our South Jersey Shore. Because yeah. I've, I've never been to the North Jersey Shore beaches. They mm-hmm. have their time and place. But, like, we're he- we love... The Sea Isle, the Avalon, the Cape May, the Stone Harbor, like the Wildwood, like we love the South. I would say like Cape May to LBI is kind of like our range. That's really wide. I would say LBI. I was going to say maybe AC. Yeah, I was going to say AC. Oh, okay. Yeah, AC to Cape May. LBI, like what? I've literally never been to LBI ever. (laughs) Me either. Have you? Yes. Oh, we used to vacation in LBI. Okay, so all right, maybe that's a personal one for you. But maybe okay, like, so maybe I feel differently for us. Actual like, but, uh, no, but <laughs> I, I feel yeah, no, yeah. but I feel like a lot of people Knowledge. who I went to like high school and school with, like a lot of people vacationed in LBI. But okay, I can't talk, speak. I can't speak. We spend our summers obviously in Avalon, Seattle. So, okay, same, but like, whatever. Yeah, it's okay. It's all right. It's fine. Don't die on this hill. I just wanted to be inclusive. But, yeah. <laughs> no, you are, but like that's fine. That's for okay. Other we're going very specific. Kate May, Atlantic yes. City. One hour up and down. Yeah, that's it. That's yes. all you get. The parkway. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, we'll describe your ideal days. Katie, start with your day. Okay. Like, okay. This answer comes to me very easily. Go ahead. Wake up. It's raining and it's Monday. No. Okay. It's not raining nor Monday. Sorry. That's a little Hannah Montana break. <laughs> <laughs> we do a lot of singing. Wait. I love that you guys literally share a brain. I like that you really knew that from those two words. It was. It was right at Looks my heart. Looks like one, one of those rough days. days. Yeah. Good one. Um, so anyway, wake up. Are we going weekend or weekday? We can. can we do a Saturday? Do can both. we do a Saturday? Do both. Like whatever you want to do. do okay, okay. Both. So this is my ideal day. Okay. Wake up. Um, it's probably going to be around 
7.30. I'm practicing my playlist because I'm teaching the 9 or 9.30. I forget what time I would always teach. But... I think it was 9.15. 9.15. Okay, right in the middle. I think it was 9.15. I think it was 9.15. So wake up 7.30 and I go for a walk or two around my block, practice my playlist in my head. And then... Because I actually never like practice my playlist on a bike. I don't know if you guys do that. Like I just like run it in my head. And okay. Yeah. Anyway, wake up, a couple laps around my block, practice my playlist, teach the 915, and then possibly slide in like a yoga or a hot cardio sculpt class after my spin class. Workout's done. I'm driving back from Seattle to Avalon, hitting shore break, getting an everything bagel with cream cheese and a pop tart and a latte. I'm getting specific. Is that okay? Please. <laughs> okay. That's my breakfast. And then actually on, like once I get back into Avalon, I'm also stopping at Juice Pod and I'm getting an Avalon Glow Smoothie and a green juice. I know what you're thinking, Katie, that's a lot of food for one girl. (laughs) But like seriously, I will consume it all. And then immediately come home, shower. All my roommates are now awake because we had a long Friday night. So like I had to go teach my class, but they're all kind of just like rising now around like 10 a.m., 10, 11 o'clock. So all my roommates are waking up. If you don't know, I do a shared house. So it's like me and a ton of other, I think we had like nine or 10 people in our house this year. Um, But normally there's like a solid core, like five or six girls that are always there. And so everyone else is getting up. We all just like immediately put on our bathing suits and go to the beach. Probably stop at Wawa, get a 44 ounce. Water? Let's talk about it actually real quick. Yeah, please. It used to be 44 ounces. And now it's. Now it's 40. Right. The XL. Yes. Iced water maybe some chips some beach snacks you know I love the Italian pinwheels you'll notice a lot of my day revolves around food <laughs> go to the beach from 10 30 11 a.m until five like as long as humanly possible and then we all go back to the house all the girls shower we get dressed we put our makeup on and then all our other friends come over to the house and we start kind of like drinking a little, having fun, playing games, just kind of like dancing, having fun. And then, okay, if it wasn't a weekend, I would go and get ice cream at like Springer's or Avalon Freeze or Sunday Best. But it's a Saturday, so game time. We're getting right to the White Briar for a happy hour. Um, going to hang at the White Briar. Going to go into, what's the back bar called? Why am I always forget that? At the White Briar? Yeah. Wait, why am I blanking? The Mermaid Bar? No, the mermaid is the one straight back so that I'm always at, like Alex's bar. Yeah, I don't know. I don't Colin's know. bar. I thought it was called the back bar. No, no, no. It has a name that's just like, it's on the ha- motorboat. Motorboat. Yeah, I sure did not know Hanging that. a motorboat probably until like 10, 30, 11, then heading over to the Princeton, having a good old time there until right before the lights come on. I have a very specific thing about I can't be in a bar when the lights come on, but I hear when the music cuts and then I just, you bolt. Bolt. I don't care who's with me. I don't care if I lose everyone. Like, I I cannot physically be in that bar when the lights come on. So I bolt. I grab a slice of overpriced, mediocre pizza from Circle. <laughs> and then I run home. I sprint home every night. Because um, once <laughs> I decide so I need to be funny. home, I just like. No, you just have to be home. I have to be home. So I run. Um, get home. Everybody kind of comes back home in like waves. So there's like the first, there's usually whenever I get there, someone is already back. I'm usually in the middle of the pack and then someone else comes back and then hang out with the girls, go to bed, do it again the next day. Like that to me is just like the no, ideal it's a day. Perfect day. That's incredible stuff. And on like weekdays, there's other things I do occasionally, but that's pretty much like it. you at your core. Oh, and if I could ever slide in a dinner at Il Posto and get a rigatoni vodka, mm. that happens. Um, if it's a weekday, I'll do my hot cardio scope before I teach. You know, it just depends on the day. Right, of course. Lots of variation. There's there's like slight variation. <laughs> there's like so much variation but it's pretty much between like classes working and out, groups. Eating us ables, yeah. going to the beach, hanging out with my friends, white briar, drank and like, transfusions. I can't believe this is the life we live. Like it's No, and like the fact that I say it out loud, I'm like, we are so lucky. No, I know. And every day is perfect. Like no, why is it perfect. like in my head it's always just like sunny. 85 it, degrees. Always, it always it is like, no it's, it's like this weird perfect pocket well have you heard of like the avalon um my sister calls it like the avalon bubble because avalon it like so, like, it, like won't it rain never rains. in avalon because uh, you know how like the island like sticks out an extra yeah mile yeah she says like a lot of times like they just miss yeah the storms. No, and rains. like when she was lifeguarding she would be like texting like sea isle or like other lifeguards and they're like it's raining here and she's like i'm not not here not here 
Yeah, which is it, like I swear to God, like it never rains. It's the most perfect place in the world. Somebody asked me the other day, like, what's it like? Like, describe the Jersey Shore. <laughs> this was an interview for a reality TV show, by the way. Shut like, up. I should have been very serious. I said, it's golden. <laughs> I literally <laughs> said that. <laughs> That's incredible. And what did they say? They were like, okay, okay. yeah, sure. Well, no, you have to experience it to get it. You have to, to experience it. it to get it. And there's like small variations, but that's like the perfect, perfect day. No, it's perfect. Alana hit us. Okay. I will say, I think that Katie and I have extremely similar days, so I won't bore you with a lot of repetition here. I will say the only thing that's different in my ideal day at the shore between Katie's is that Katie's hitting the White Briar in Princeton. I'm so not doing that. I'm going right to Seattle and I'm not getting specific. I'm just keeping an open mind and I'm really just journeying about town looking for a fun happy hour and also drinks out on the town. Typically my um, night is ending at the Ocean Drive. That is my dead stomping. dog. No. Like, okay, like, if you were, like, Alana, seriously, like, I'm dying to go to the dead dog, of course. Like, I'm coming with you. We're going to toss the napkins. It's going to be great. You can get her to go anywhere. You can get me really to go anywhere. <laughs> if I'm in charge of the plans, we're going to the Ocean Drive. We're having mermaid lemonades. And um, that's just really, at my core, my favorite place to be. Like, I love the Ocean Drive dance floor. And I know that's not a popular opinion because it's, like, really hot, really sweaty. Um, I love it. Like, I just feel like it feeds my soul. A core tenant of the podcast mm -hmm. is that Alana will come to Avalon, but I will never go to yeah, Sea Isle. you never are in Sea Isle. Oh, and no. that's factual information. Like, not just from my, like, our friendship. All of our friends, we all know – during the summer, it's like, oh, if you want to see Katie at all, you have to go to Avalon. Like, she's never coming to see you. Like, she doesn't Why? like you that much. No, I love to come Sea Isle. The like, bridge. And uh, uh, so many people have created this narrative that I'm like anti Sea Isle. I'm so not. You okay. so are. I'm not. We could get into it. it. We, we could get oh into it. Oh my God. It. This is what I'm saying. I'm not anti Sea Isle. I love Sea Isle. It's just all of like, like everyone in my house is always got. We're just like, again, like we live no, so close e to the. No, it's easy. Whatever, Princeton. We have a routine. Don't back her up. I, I have a routine. And she has a routine. Tell me this, Katie. How many times did you come to Sea Isle this summer? Once. And where did we go? I don't want to talk about it. No, where did we go? Go ahead. Twice. Talk about it. Twice. Let's let's open yeah, it no, up. I, I the OD. Okay. And what's that place called? Shibuzi. What? Shenanigans. What's a shenanigans? Oh, well, no wonder you don't want to come back to Sea Isle. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. No. Thank you. you. Like no, she's telling the story horribly I didn't even tell the story okay I'm saying <laughs> I need you to get sp specific we were going to what the buck okay what the buck is literally wait question for yeah. Tori okay what age do you think you cap out of what the buck 22 thank you that's not true I think you're both wrong <laughs> no I'm sorry it's literally when you're 21 that's the only time you can go to what the buck thank wait, you I so disagree like That's actually fine. to my core and I'll tell you this my siblings all were like in the know of what the buck and would go to what the buck every Thursday every summer what did Alicia say didn't she, we asked her the same question didn't she say something outrageous when she like 26 <laughs> she said like 30 or something crazy like something insane. but then Carly was like 22 no but then Sam and Daniel were both like 26 max out and I was like, thank you. I completely agree. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. I still stand by that. And I'm not saying we have to go every Thursday. But what I'm asking is that we just make an appearance once in the summer. Okay. okay. I can get behind a once a summer. Yeah. What the buck. Yeah, no, yeah. Th thank you so much for saying that. Now, um, I planned this whole event. We're going to go to what the buck. Plan this whole event. I'm it's so what the buck. I'm looking so forward to it. Like plan my outfit. It's going to be phenomenal. Katie decides she's going to drive. And I'm like, no, you can't. To what the buck? Yeah, you can't go to what the buck and expect to have a to good time drive? and have not one drink. To drive? Like, seriously, drove and parked on the street. You guys should have called me. What a car did you guys? No, seriously. I was like, I'm sorry. We, how are you expecting? Like, you're literally asking for a failure of an evening when you drive to what the buck. Like, you have to jump in head first. It's insane. It's and then, one dollar drink. That's a whole, whole point. point. I know. So, no, it's seriously, she has one. And she's like, you know what? I'm just like feeling like a little tired. I mean, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Of course you are because you didn't jump in. Like you have to, you have to immerse yourself in the what the bulk I couldn't. culture. I couldn't. And you didn't want to do that, which is okay. But again, back to the main part of the story, we are ending at the Ocean Drive. Okay. And you're going to have a good time. We're standing out at the sandbar. Yeah. Pretty much the whole night. Like I'm going to be out at the sandbar listening to the good music, getting like the ocean waves, just really like taking in that shore air, having some drinks, having some shots, just doing all the things. Now I will say... I do this once a summer, and this is how I'll change my day. 
I do this once a summer and it's really one of my favorite days every single summer. One day out of the summer, we all get together, my whole family, and we run a boat and we take the boat from Ocean City down to Stone Harbor. We're going to park at Buckets and we're going to have <gasps> lunch and margaritas at Buckets. Perfect. And then all who want to participate, because I'm an activity girl t- at my core, we're going to do island water sports. It's perfect. And it's literally some of the most fun ever. Island water sports is basically in the bay and it's all these blow up inflatables and like obstacle courses and things. I think and like wipeout almost. It's pretty much wipeout yeah. at the shore. And you can sit at this restaurant that's pretty much Mexican food, margaritas. Um, but like, right the most, like the most like American version of a Beyond. Mexican restaurant. Yeah, it's I shouldn't ama- say it's authentic for no, no, at all. So, no, 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 but at it's all. so good. Like you have to go to, I want, you only really need buckets like once or twice a summer. Yeah. But that one time is imperative. Yeah. And like I'm always, if you're like, oh my gosh, like I'm dying to go to the water park. Okay, same. Um, yeah. I love a slide. Like I love a shotgun falls. Like that's just incredible to me. Island water sports with everyone I know having a few margaritas, just like really letting loose like that. That's my ideal day. There is no place like the Jersey Shore. It's like No, it's just so like good. Nowhere like it. Wait, so what's your ideal day? Pretty much like you guys hit it spot okay. on. Um, The only thing is the mornings are very like just a lot of work for me. Like wake yeah. up. Right. I'm at the studios. I'm at like one of, I'm normally at the spin studio, but I try to get to all three at some point. Um, so from like, 6 30 till about noon i'm really doing a lot of work right yeah. so that's like really the only place that we differ but then after that the middle of the day if it's a weekend the middle of the day is you know beach or right. a boat or all the fun shore activities yeah just like the fun stuff we have like a rooftop deck at our house that doesn't have like a cover on it so it's just like open so like we just sometimes go up there to tan nice. if you don't feel like making the trek down to the beach we do backyard beach it's sometimes. so far no it's so <laughs> far <laughs> um so yeah we're like pretty spot on but my place is um i love patties okay you guys are such big patties i love patties do you i love patties and love i'm patties. so glad you said that well Thank like you for 70 percent of stride also works yes. at patties slash od poorhouse. slash yes. poorhouse like everyone also works there yeah so it's really just fun like seeing everyone outside of like the stride element like yes. and yeah. their poorhouse element that's really cute to see and i also just i like to go to bed early right. so i yeah. like the timing of patties because it closes at 11 and they're like, you got to get out. So everyone yeah. leaves at 11 and then everyone goes to the OD. But that's when I just go home. Right. So I've never made it to napkins a day in my life. Um, I always try. But now I just feel like I keep getting older. And I'm like, now what's the point? The yeah. thing is, like, if you don't ever, you'll be all right. And I and I have been. Like, I've done, I haven't You've done been it for okay. 26 years. Right. I'm, to- I'm happier than ever. So I do think I can continue on being happy without going to napkins. But that's good. One day of my life, I would like to go. But I love patties. It's just like my safe space. I've seen quite a few white bar happy hours. Oh, I love a white bar happy hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when you like, when it's kind of a down week. Like there's a few down weekends at the shore. Like early June, late August. Yeah, uh, yes. When yep, it. it's not like heightened yet, but. The people that you want to see are still around. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Like all of our friends are down. That's the best time to go. So when you don't have to like really, you know, look your best, but still go and have a great time. Like it's a sweatshirt night at White Briar Happy Hour. Incredible. I'm sorry. There's literally nothing better. Or like show up in a tank top and be like, oh, I'm cold. I need to buy a sweatshirt. No, I guess. No. <laughs> and you're like pulling the racks in the back. No, wait, remember we showed up to the studio the next morning, both with Magic. the White Briar sweatshirts. Yep. I love them so much. Like it's just the best like you get the white bar sushi you get the edamame and you sit down you get a table if you get a table at white bar happy hour and you don't leave that table the people watching is insane there's nothing better and you get to watch it turn over from like happy hour to drunk people yes yeah it's the best i think a couple twice this summer i was coming in as you were like closing out the evening and i probably had a few drinks and i'm like Tori! <laughs> yeah you come stumbling in I, I know. I'm like, I need a transfusion. <laughs> yeah, I just, I love White Briar Happy Hour. Um, but yeah, the older I get, the more I venture into Avalon. Um, that is a fact. Uh, I just feel like sometimes, like, the it's just a little too young in Sea Isle sometimes. Like, yeah. Okay. Especially shenanigans, like, it is 21, 22. Okay. But the OD, like, I get it. I think Dead Dog is a little older. 
That's so interesting. Mm. You would you think that the dead dog is older than the ocean drive? Late night, yeah. Okay. Okay. But I've also never been, so who am I to say? <laughs> right. You're like, but in my stories mind. I hear. This is the I hear. But my favorite thing is like, because I don't really stay out super late with all the girls, when they all come back, I love hearing them all come back yeah and then i love hearing their stories from the night before like it just makes me so happy yes my favorite part is the next morning when all my friends it's normally my room because we have the most beds in our room we've i'm in a short house and i have three twin beds in my room and it is so much fun everyone just comes in there's like seven girls in the room and we're all like comparing stories putting pieces together be like wait they said this to me or like oh my god I saw you do that like it is truly such a special time like the morning recap and then like the recap actually continues all day on the beach like we talk about it we're always like we're just constantly recapping and then like something new will happen and then we'll just recap that like I've always wanted to start a podcast called Sunday Scaries where it's literally that like you just yeah like everyone goes out and then you just recap it, but you podcast it. Yes. I love and that. And like unpack everything you saw, who you yeah. talked to, what and you it, talked about. Yeah. And it's only on in the summer. Like it's only a summer podcast. Oh my God. I love and that. And you have like short break in your hand while you do it. Like obviously. Pop tarts. Incredible. Um, we have this routine where on Sunday nights, we all get sushi, come back to our house and then we'll do, everybody goes around, <laughs> says our high and our low mm-hmm. of the weekend mm-hmm. and it's hilarious. And then <laughs> we... Like we just talk about the craziest things and then my roommates will listen to because on Mondays or Tuesdays, me and Alana record our podcast right. and I'm recapping my weekend. Alana's recapping her weekend and they'll listen and they'll be like, oh my God, that's exactly how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I also forgot to mention part of the best part of the shore are the sunsets. Oh, like wow. I love seeing the sunset and on the street that I'm on, like we have a really gorgeous like sunset viewing at like the end of our street yeah Yeah. so i just like love going down and like watching the sunsets and just like the best me too with ice cream in hand yeah of course of course love god i just love now i'm sad but don't worry guys because we basically already made it to (laughs) no it's already memorial day (laughs) we're almost there that's my super bowl is memorial day it's not the fourth of july fourth of july is actually the beginning of the end of the summer in my opinion i agree i agree Oh my God. Okay. So not only have we made it to Memorial Day, but also at July 4th, we're, we're done. done with the summer. <laughs> no, okay. we're not done. No, we're not done. It's the beginning like of the, of the end though. Yes. Like June's the best month. June is by far the best month. Everything is open. All of like the people that we want to be down are yeah. down. The last two weekends of June. Sweet spot. No, it's sweet. Absolutely incredible. It's really sweet. And it's incredible. You don't even have to start like as long as the we're in that June month, you don't even have to look at the end of summer. Nope. Like you still have yeah, so much left. You know what I mean? But like in July, you're like, it's almost August. Like you're kind of already like anticipating it. But like in June, incredible. And I feel like now because of the Eagles autism at the OD, we kind of have like a second 4th of July day. So you know yes. what I mean by that? So yes. True. It literally feels like a national holiday down there. Yeah. And I love yes. it. No, it's great. And it's, they always do it at the end of June. They always do it the last week in June. June. And it's incredible. And I love that they do it on a Wednesday because I actually can't imagine what would happen if they did it on a Saturday. It's so crazy. I love telling the story because we went, I think this was the first year they had it like three summers ago, three or four, right? This was their, I think their third. Yeah. So we went three summers ago and it was the same thing. It was like five to eight or something. And Mm -hmm. I think like Jason Kelsey was the only one there maybe there was like another eagle or two but it wasn't like this big thing that they have now mm. and me and my sister and like one of our other friends were like oh like let's go and we went at like seven it was done at eight like we went really late we walked right in and it was the most fun ever like we literally had so much fun because it wasn't like this big thing yet right and we won like three raffle baskets like walked no at the way. end put our tickets on the top and won like three raffle baskets we all so well fun. actually the story goes that my one friend won two my sister won one and I got nothing. Oh, so, oh, okay. But we all won everything. Yeah. And then we went back the next year and it still wasn't like super crazy. Um, but that was the year that Travis showed up, but nobody knew he was going to be there. And it was, again, like, I just, it's so much fun. And now it's like this big thing and it's fun for like a different reason, yeah. you know, because it's like a big event. Yeah. But I do kind of miss the days where you could actually, like, you could just walk, walk up to the bar and yeah, get a drink. Like now it's like, one year, last year, Alana tried to come in 
I was like, oh, like, come meet me. She got actually stuck. Like, she was like, I can't move. It took me an hour from the front door of the Ocean Drive. To get to the bar. To get to where Katie was standing. Like, I actually could not make you progress. You couldn't even walk? I couldn't even walk towards her. And there was a point where we were standing. Like, she was probably standing, I don't know, maybe where the camera is. And we were that far apart for 25 minutes. Because literally, I could not get by. That was how insane it was. What happened this year, though? This year, I felt like was better. I think we just had a better spot this year, too. I just think now that they have so many different events, like they have like the stuff that goes on during the day mm-hmm. and they have the stuff. I think they did some stuff at like patties and stuff. Yeah, it's like, like more it's spread more out. spread out. I yeah. Think. But that what that two summers ago was insane. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's so fun. Like there's nothing better than this show. <laughs> like there's just literally nothing better. We could talk about Golden. it for like 10 podcast episodes and I would never get bored. Thousand percent. Do we need to start a short podcast? This? Oh, I guess we both kind of have podcasts already. <laughs> no, but we're talking about the short. Wouldn't like Sunday Scaries be a fun thing? That would yeah. be so fun. I know. And like you Your could just have different it. people on it talking about their weekends. And everyone just like on the couch or in a bed, hungover with a microphone and a coffee. Like imagine the content that I have. I that. already have stories to tell. Like I'm already thinking, I'm like, oh. No, it would be so good. And also like the crazy thing about the shores, everyone kind of knows each other. Like it's a very small town. Yeah. So like who you run into at the bar knows someone else that knows and everyone is connected. And I think that makes it so much more fun. Totally. And I feel like I love when your friend group has like characters. Do you know what I mean? About <laughs> like a thousand. There's percent. so many characters who you see and you're like, I can't believe they're here. Or like, I can't believe they're talking to that person. Like, it's yeah. just like so much no, fun. Like when you went mini golfing with, and I was like, how do you know him? Oh yeah. And you're, you're like, and I'm like, I don't even actually know how I know him. Like he's just like <laughs> in the group. Like, <laughs> no, oh, it's MJ. just like so funny. But so that's a shore for you. Anything else you guys want to add to the viewers of just like really honing in of how special the shore is before we move on to some pop culture. I, I fear we're going to, could go on forever basically we pretty much just spend every single day thinking about the shore wishing we were at the shore yeah wishing we were at the shore wishing for memorial day to come and then we spend pretty much all summer just like really dreading the labor day you know that's just because that's how much we love it and how much fun we have labor day is the best and worst day of the year why best because again everyone's there like everybody comes back you know what i mean fun day especially the sunday fun day of labor day weekend yes i agree is incredible and there's like a little bit to look forward to at labor day like the eagles are starting right like, i don't know there's like, like there's some stuff fall in the air but it's still summer yeah that's true i actually feel like the lead up to labor day is worse than like the two or three weeks before is worse than the actual labor day weekend but the weekend before labor day rocks yeah because no one's there no one's so there. true because everybody went back to school yeah yeah love, love. well love guys we basically made it don't worry memorial day is right around the corner yeah totally okay um we are yapping a lot which is fantastic so let's just pick one or two pop culture topics Perfect. to really dive into love what are we feeling the most lit up about i'll give you some options and then whatever like piques your interest most you let me know okay zach bryan slash dave portnoy mm. um air is miami tell me lies i think we can skip that okay martha doc i think we can skip wicked and then beverly hills divorces i'm feeling super called and hear me out to one and two Let's do it. How do you feel? I feel good about and, that. And like we could really talk about Wicked if we needed to because like we are literally thinking about it every single moment. Our eyes are open. I listened to the whole soundtrack on the way here. And that's how passionate we are about Wicked just in general. And we've seen it so many but times. But I feel like there's nothing quite to say until I see the movie. Yeah. Like I'm so excited. Did you buy tickets yet for the movie? Yes. We sure did. Where are you seeing it in Philly? Jersey. Jersey. Yeah. At my hometown theater. Okay. Of course. I feel like it's a hometown theater, hometown friends kind of movie. 100%. So like me and my high school friends are going opening night. Plus me. Well, and Alana. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's like included. Well, it almost like made it sound like you were like, yeah, but like me and my high school friends. So like Alana. Well, I just kick like obviously rocks. Alana kick too. Rocks. Is it going to be like a midnight, like twilight premiere kind of well, showing? Now, now they do this thing where it's even if the premiere is technically on Friday, Mm. you can watch it at like eight it's like at eight on thursday like, oh how interesting so is that the one you're going to yeah i think like seven something eight something yeah right i think it's like 8 30 yeah and yeah, then i'm, I'm really actually excited. also seeing it friday with my it twice yes with my dance teacher friends because like you know as a dance teacher i feel like musicals are really part of our everyday life yes so everybody was like let's all go together and i was like can't miss out on that so we're just gonna see it back to back every day sure that'll be fine i'm also somehow trying to secure a ticket to the New York premiere tomorrow, but um, not doing well. There's so. still time, Katie. There's mm. still time. Maybe you can call your team. 
Call your team. You're so right. Let me call my team. <laughs> yeah, tell me to get on that. <laughs> Mrs. Begley. <laughs> Jack mom. Begley. Hey, mom. Uh, can you get those wicked tickets? <laughs> can you get the ticket for me? Thank you so much. Um, okay, so we're very excited for Wicked. So excited. I'm yeah. sorry. We just had to recap it's, really no, quick. Caveat, but fine. let's d- dive in. I do have a question, though, about Wicked part one and part two, or is it? Part one, part two. Yeah. So this is part one. So where is this going to end? I believe right after Defying right Gravity, Gravity, as is the Broadway show. When is part two going to come out? Next, Next year. year. Oh, so not that far. It's not going to be like we have to wait till 2028. So no, th- they're saying next year, but I don't think it's like have it's not it? said exactly when it is coming out yet. There's no date. There's no date. But I think we are to believe like same time next year. OK, my question is, no, I know Wicked is not a topic, but <laughs> are they going to do this whole premiere thing again next year? Like yeah. the world tour premiere. We're going to get all this thing like all again. I think so. I think they have to. I feel like it's going to be maybe a little bit based off of what happens in round one. Like, obviously, we know it's going to be pretty much the most spectacular I mean, movie event of everyone 2024. Everyone who has seen it, I haven't seen one person who's seen it and not had the most glowing review. Yeah. It I looks agree. incredible. But do you think it's one of those things where people are scared to say they don't like it? <laughs> okay, that's a really good point. So much press. I don't think so, though. I don't think so. Because people are, love to be haters. People love to hate. Yeah. And people love to hate. And people, like, I loved the Barbie movie personally. Same. But when it came out, people would hate it. And I was like, I don't. I actually think it was one of the best movies ever. I Agreed. loved the Barbie movie. So did I. Loved it. No, Wicked's going to be incredible. Like, there's just no way you can't turn Wicked into a movie with Ariana Grande and Cynthia Erivo and it not be just the most spectacular thing you've ever seen. That's how I like to think Yeah, like personal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a personal thing, but. Agreed. Okay, seriously, let's get yeah, into it. Yeah, because we didn't even talk about Wicked. Um, Zach Bryan, what, like, where do we stand? Here's my message to Zach Bryan. Okay. Last night we <laughs> let the liquor talk. <laughs> I literally the craziest thing was I couldn't get the first lyric out, but it's, as soon as you said, "Here's my message to him," I was like, "I know where she's going with this," and like I was gonna try to meet you there, and I couldn't think of how. It's like started. seriously, if I'm being serious. If I ever got an earshot of this man, like I'm screaming Morgan Wall lyrics. Like I, <laughs> he is such a weenie loser. Weenie loser. Uh, we're like team Brie to the max out amount. The thing is also, and I should say this as a disclaimer, like I've never been like a huge Zach Bryan stan. Me either. So it wasn't hard. It wasn't. To- yeah, it wasn't like super dreadful to me to like not have to listen to him. But at the same time, the live podcast of BFFs, did you watch it? Of course. Oh, my God. Like, first of all, I give her so much credit for putting that on the internet and also just like speaking her truth. Like, that's got to be so scary. So scary. So scary and so hard. Like, I feel like you could actually see in video form that it was like such a struggle for her to even say some of those things that she had to say about him. It's unbelievable. Yes. And there are a few things I, f- I fear a lot of things in this life. But one of the things I fear the most is a lawsuit. Like, I don't know why. Like, anything Same. legal scares the shit out of me. Her going on that podcast and talking about it and opening herself up to like all these potential lawsuits is insane. Insane. But like, I guess like, what would they sue her for? I don't know. But also, whenever I am like on Instagram or whatever and I see something about the drama that's outside of the chronically online community that don't really know mm. all that's going on with like BFF's pod, everyone is like, she is such an attention seeking <gasps> who is making up this rumor of the $12 million. Like all these, oh, it's honestly a lot of men obviously don't know like what's going on behind the scenes. And it's crazy Here's to hear th- them talk about this. If you are not a chronically online person, you cannot speak on chronically online activities. So 100%. I think we should just, you can't say just jump in. I feel like we should just say this. Like if you're not a chronically online individual, there's only one right answer in this situation, and it's Team Bray. Like there, I you literally couldn't convince me any other way. There's I, just I didn't even know people were doing teams. Well, I'm just I I'm I I don't know if they are either. I'm just picking a team. Are people team like ZB? I, I some are. Well, okay. I guess we should say this. What does everybody think about continuing to listen to his music, even if you are Team Bray? Okay, this is where I struggle. Okay, I have not listened to his music since. Are you okay. a big Zach Bryan fan? Wasn't big. But I did love his music. Okay. Like, okay. So more of a music fan than a personal fan. Yeah. Yeah. No. When I like personally, like, I don't know if you're serving your wife divorce papers in the army, like that kind of says everything I need to know about you. Yeah. You I know agree. what I mean? So I never thought he was like the most stand up guy, but I always liked his music. I haven't listened since. And I'm not saying I miss it, but I'm also not like, 
I think and now it's going to open the door for like the Noah Khans. Yes. A little bit more. Like he already has his door open, yeah. but it's going to be even more open. It's tough for me to say because, again, I'm not trying to act like I'm better than everyone else. But like I tried to listen to his music so many times because like I know a lot of people who are huge fans. And I'm like, oh, like I better get on this fucking train like because I hate to be left out. One thing about me, I want to be in every single circle that I am. That's why I'm obsessed with pop culture and everything that is online media so true and so to be left out of something I really didn't want to feel that way so I tried to listen to him so many times I have so many of his songs saved and I could not get into it for the life of me like I was like this is this is impossible so I'm honestly kind of relieved but I don't again I'm not Brie so I don't know but like I don't think people necessarily need to stop listening to his music if you like his music. Like, I don't know. I also don't think that... I think that is... I think with everything going on, I don't think Brie also wants people to stop listening to his music. Like, I just don't think she cares. Mm. Like, I think she's more on the team of, like, I'm telling you exactly what happened from my side of the story. Do with that what you will. And, like, I don't... Like, I don't necessarily think she's trying to, like, take him to the ground now dave portnoy i don't know that's a whole different story i live for dave portnoy Me like too. how do we get dave portnoy in our corner of life he's the most loyal bitch i've ever met in my life yeah we actually did a podcast where we oh accidentally spiraled out of control into a dave portnoy fan club how much we are obsessed <laughs> with dave portnoy like we literally looked at each other afterwards and we were like we have to move on it just kept coming back to how much we love him and it's so true that he at his core is a loyal person beyond and I feel like has just like really strong values and that's what I love about him and he's just like so true to himself and he's fearless so fearless because like I said five seconds ago I fear a lawsuit more than anything in this world and he clearly he runs right at them like to have that level of no fear is something I aspire to have totally did you guys ever well I told a lot of this did you ever watch the barstool like documentary no I feel like no one knows about this documentary that exists it's like a 10 part like I think they like produced it and made it or whatever, but it's like the history of Barstool and they released it. They were releasing it like episode by episode, like during COVID, during the like March, April COVID, like locked in your homes, no date like COVID. Okay. And so I watched it and like from that moment on, I was like, I ride for you, Charlie. Like I ride for this man (laughs) so hard. Like he is so legit. And ever since I've just have been like, there's actually no one that I would want to like, to be on his bad side is one of my biggest fears. I fear that that is something we should all be thinking about. And I'm someone constantly. who like, I really don't care if people don't like me. Like if you, like a lot of people like think what I do online is cringy or whatever. I'm like, okay, whatever. Like good riddance. Him, if he ever like, it's not, I guess it wouldn't even be dislike. Like if I ended up on his like shit list, like the Zach Bryans of the world. Like you had a champagne bottle with Pops Arcadia. Yes, yes. Thank you. I, exactly. I wasn't going to get into that, but yes, I explained that to Alana the other night. I was like, he does this thing where he gets these champagne bottles. Such an incredible grades. idea. No, they're incredible. In, I love it. enemies names and then pops it when they fall. I'm like, whew, chilling. <laughs> chilling. He is a mastermind. Like no wonder he likes to love Swift as much as he does. And I also love that about him. Like love. It just really makes me feel like we can all we can all like what we want to and we should all just be accepting of everyone and what they like. Like the fact that Dave Portnoy loves Taylor Swift so much that he has a jacket with every single one of her albums plastered on the back and is wearing it to the concert and getting invited in the VIP booth and getting a handwritten letter from Taylor. Like I'm seriously I know I'm spiraling but like I you can that. see where the fan club came from. Like no, this. he's just so incredible. And it's also, t- wait, not us. Like, be- <laughs> I told oh, you, it's going to turn into you're, a day. Dave- here we and go people again. are going to be like, oh, they're pick me girls. Like, no. No, I just no, literally love like, him. To have someone that ride or die for you, like, yeah. how great is he? Yeah, and like, she appreciates <laughs> it too. Like, it's the best thing ever. And also, like, not only is he ride or die for, like, the people that he likes, he will hate the- their enemies as if they're his own. Yes. Like, he Hates Kim Kardashian. Right. Hates. Has for many means. Zach Zach Bryan. Hates. Hates. Um, Back to Zach Bryan. He is the definition of, I use this term, seriously, only when I really think it applies, loser. Like, I think, like, if someone ever, like, looked at me and called me, like, a loser, like, that is, like, would cut really deep for me. So when I use it towards him, I want him to know that I mean, like, you're seriously the biggest weenie loser I've like like that kind of man who was just like so insecure that you have to like attack Brie and like bring her down because clearly you have zero self-confidence like 
Oh my God. Or how about like, or how about, you know, you are so wrong in things that you do against these women that you have to not one time, multiple times, you've had to pay them out so that they don't speak out against you. Allegedly. That is insanity. (laughs) Insanity to me. Like, I just feel like maybe Zach Ryan take a big fat look in the mirror. Like, seriously, stop repeating itself. You know what I mean? Like, why does it keep happening over and over and over again? And he's like, I'm just like, I'm just figuring it out. I'm a kid. I'm like, that is such bull. Like, figuring what out? How to not, like, be emotionally abusive? Like, yeah, maybe you should figure that out. Or, like, is he blaming it on the fame? Like, the quick rise to fame? Because, like, we could talk about Sabrina Carpenter. Like, seriously, the most poised individual of all time. Guess what? rise to fame so fast wait i don't think her rise to fame was fast i do she was on disney no i know but i'm saying her musical career has like absolutely taken off okay, in the yeah. last like but not the way that years. he went from like zero to 100 okay that i guess that's fair but i do think that sabrina has also like yes yeah, she is so much elegant so quickly and has done it in such a graceful way yeah there's a lot of people who are rising to fame really quickly who aren't, who aren't doing, doing it gracefully yeah. yeah i actually have one in mind that i won't Ew. we're all gonna agree because Oh, I can't wait to hear about it offline. I bet you we could say it at the same time and it would be the same person. But like, I kind of like this person. So like, I feel bad slandering their name. Okay. We'll tell you later. Oh, I can't wait to hear. Okay. No, they're like an actual celebrity. Like they would like actually not care that I said anything, but like, I'm so scared. (laughs) Do I know them? Yes. Okay. And given their previous- It's Chapel Run. It's Chapel Run. Oh, (laughs) what's that about (laughs) it? (laughs) I was going to say, given their previous actions, like, I really also don't want to be on her bad side. No, like, I'm I don't scared of her. On her bad I'm side. scared of her. That's why I, like, don't want to say that because, like, I actually, like, I don't dislike Chapel Roan, but, like, she's nothing. She's not even close to graceful. Like, nothing about her is graceful. Her music is incredible. She is so talented, and I actually still really do listen to her. I just think, like, maybe some media training is definitely necessary in that area. Where has the media training gone? She, stre- she stresses gone? me out. Like, I'm ser- like I'm literally scared. I also don't want her to feel so stressed. Like, I feel like I feel her no. stress. No, me too. I'm, I'm like, like oh, I you can. It's okay. Like, we we are really rooting for you. Like, no, that's what I want to tell her. I'm like, yes. Chapel, like, it's okay. Like, uh, everything's going to be okay. We're all rooting for you. Like, we're here for you. Like, like, we got you. You don't have to be so upset. Like, it's okay. Pink Pony Club. I'm gonna keep on dancing. I hope you're okay that we just keep building. Absolutely, out the song. please. Okay. I love it. It's just like when I get a mic, it's just karaoke time to me. No, yeah. and as it should be. Um, so yeah. Chapel. Speaking of Mike, we went to Taylor Swift Miami. Yes. Tell me about it. Was it the best night of your life or what? Yes. Well, first off, we were dry. You were soaking wet. I was soaking wet. Yes, I was. Rain show. Okay. It was the first time I got to see Taylor Swift in the rain. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Like, it was just like, oh, my God. I didn't really understand the lore of the rain show. Like, to be honest, I know everybody talks about rain show, rain show, rain show, best night of your life. Like, and I, I believed them, but I just never got to experience it. So I wasn't really totally sure what everybody meant by that. When you see her up there and her curls are sopping wet and she's whipping her hair in the wind, she's got the red lip that's not even moving an ounce no. or the wing that literally hasn't moved slightly. It could survive a nuclear bomb. Wait, which setting spray is she using? Is it the Patrick Star? I actually don't know. The I feel like size. it has to be one I think it has size. To be. That's what Beyonce's using. I feel like she just uses a ton of stage makeup. And I feel like she must be employing like right. the best makeup artists of all time has you know? to be like i feel like her face is like graftobian like literal like broadway production stage makeup totally yeah, like i, I don't think she's out here using like no shade to like patrick Ta, but like that's not holding up with what she's doing when she came out during enchanted that to me was like really when because the dancers are dancing around her while she's up on this you know platform and their dresses are picking up the water from the stage Okay, that was that was where I was like, yeah, I couldn't see that in my nosebleeds, but I, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, well, take my word for it. <laughs> um, my favorite part about the rain show was that like I got to witness her and like the rain and everything, but like and I was, I was dry. <laughs> <laughs> so with you. Okay, that's fair. No, that's so fair. Um, I was just like living in the rain. I was like, we're we're just here, you know. There was no escaping, and I I was actually like so okay with it my favorite part by far of the whole show because right after the show people were like well, what was your favorite part i'm like i don't know i can't think about it now i've really thought about it by far was and i told you this it was pouring rain and it was the transition during reputation of don't hate me for what you made me do 
and she does like this thing and she's like, like I literally felt electricity. No, I've goosebumps right now. I'm talking about it. Like I literally told, I texted my mom right after that happened. I was like, I think I just experienced something. Like I was like, <laughs> something <laughs> happened because my body, I'm getting chills right now, like literally talking about it because I, I felt like she, there was like this power like I can't even describe it like pushing me back like you know in the cartoons when you can like see like people's like superpowers yeah, she was summoning the weather like no like it was literally superpowers I was like falling back I'm like holding Ariel to like keep me up I'm like oh my god somebody help me because this is insane the reputation set was absolutely insane with like without the rain absolutely insane with the rain I don't know I in the gold. And, I was going to say. In the gold. Let's talk about the outfit change because we actually were the first people to ever get to experience it. Yes. Which is something yeah, we that we really can't take for granted. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we're watching all these other people abroad having these really special eras tour moments, you know, special surprise songs. like London. Lo right. Of course. And like when we got the new reputation outfit, I was like, okay, so we're, we're watching history. You know what I mean? Like this yes. is something we're always going to talk about and we're going to tell our kids about it. But I, I couldn't be more... I just love it so much. I'm sorry. I love it so much. What's your favorite album? Ooh, such a good question. Okay. So right now I think it's TTPD. Okay. Ooh, love. I do. But my top three are always TTPD, Folklore, Reputation. Okay. Love. I think I like TTPD because to me it reminds me a lot of a mix between Folklore and Reputation. Okay. <gasps> I see that. Yes. Which totally. is really important to me. Right? Yeah. I see that. Okay. Yeah. What about you guys? Okay, my top three is Lover, Midnights, and Reputation. Not Not in that order, I don't believe. Like, I, I feel like I do tend to change, like, who's at the top. But it always remains those three for me. Very interesting. Midnights. I love Midnights. Like, I love Midnights. I, I was actually just about to say, like, Midnights really normally is my number one. Wow. Like, I love it that much. Like, and I know this is, like, super an unpopular opinion. Vigilante shit during the concert is Sexy. In my top three favorite parts of the entire Crazy concert. Crazy sexy. Like, I love everything about it. And I maybe it's just, like, from my dance background, like, watching them up with the chairs. Like, that is just – yeah, I love that. Um, but Midnight's in general, Mastermind, um, I'm trying to think. I mean, they're all so good. Like, I could listen to that album straight through, and there's never a skip ever for me. Interesting. Yeah. Katie? Reputation, Midnight's. The third one is always a changer because I'm kind of like a born again Swifty. Mm. Like I, I like, you know, I was very, very present during fearless it's a love story. speak now read like I was really, really big. And then I fell off for a little bit. And I would say in the past like two to three years, I've really like dove back in. Yeah. Mostly the past two years. So the third one's always changing because I do love a fearless moment. But <sighs> Fuck it, 1989. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Sorry, like the that was crazy. Behind number three. <laughs> the way you just made us wait for that. Oh, I'm Sorry, like, I don't know why I felt like being so dramatic. That was so Fuck it. <laughs> 1989. Like, who do you think you're offending there? Like, no, like, like you thought you were speaking something into word that was going to be so not well Like, received. I was breaking the internet with that one. Like, Fuck it. 1989. No, I think that's a great choice. <laughs> Today, I, I was listening choice. to Red all day. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't know why. It was just like a red day. You know what I mean? You're wearing I, red. I am wearing red. Yeah, I'm kind of in like a red renaissance right now. But um, I bet you think about me is in my top five favorite songs. <gasps> It oh, is an incredible one. Yeah. yeah. What is like your. F okay. It's so hard. And no, but so try. Hard. Okay. Okay. My all time. All, all time. time. If anybody has it first, can can they go first? While I, I feel think. like Tori has it. I just need to. I need a second. No, well, do I need a based second. off of like what I am currently listening to. Okay. My all time is how did it end? Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. I can see that. I, I'm feeling that for you. Um, that's a great one. It's a great one. Okay, wait, I can tell you my most listened to. Yeah, but I don't think it's my favorite one. Okay, it's crazy. I mean, no, this one actually is crazy. Fuck it, <laughs> fuck it, <laughs> fuck it. The man, like oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh the Blazers, the Blazers. Oh, great one. Katie. I that song. Whenever I need like 
motivation or just like I want to feel good or I want to feel inspired like I go to that so I go back from The Man by Taylor Swift and Like a Boy by Sierra and I just mm. like can you tell I'm really fighting the patriarchy there <laughs> like I'm yeah. really like yeah oh I actually think I have to change my answer I'd see it's so hard it's so hard clean <gasps> That okay. song is so good. That's a great one. That's a great, really good choice. You just took my breath away. And, like, it's <laughs> so really good. good choice. Like, for so many reasons. But, like, one of the reasons specifically is because Katie Brennan would always do a ride every year at Stride Sea Isle, like, just for, like, staff and just for fun. Love. And she, would, she would teach one she class. Would teach <laughs> That's so fun. And it was so fun. And one year, that was her inspo song. And, like, Katie pretty much, she was like, she won't care that I'm trying the story, but she was like, I was really depressed for a long time and like now I'm clean. And then she played the song. We all sobbed. That is literally like, so I kind of wish I was there. Oh my gosh. That's incredible. No, like sobbed. So like when we had surprise songs, I was hoping more than anything that it would be clean. I know. Um, But I also, well, I think it was night three got guilty of sin. That actually shattered me. Okay. Mm-hmm. You want a guilty of sin because guilty of sin to me sounds and feels like going over the bridge to get into Sea Isle. That's oh, what that song really? sounds like. Yeah. Okay. Love that. Mm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Another one of my favorites that, again, I listen to all the time, but like, I don't even know if it's one of my favorites. Mm. Cornelia Street, the live version. It's beautiful. I get chills down my spine. Yeah. That's I also a good one. love You're On Your Own Kid. That's a good one. They're all, no, no, like, you actually can't say one song Make and we're going to be like, really? <laughs> I, I'm like scrolling through my music and I've, I've, I think I've since found about 10 of my favorite songs. Like I, I can't, I, know. I, I think changing midnight one. Okay. I'll give you one. And this is like just due to recent events. I can do it with a broken heart. Ooh. <gasps> and oh, like, wait, no, she's oh. fine. Okay. She's fine. <laughs> oh, 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 no, no, not for, not for any personal reasons. It's okay. Thank okay, God. Um, I, she's still in a very happy, healthy okay, relationship. Oh my God. I've done that to like multiple people and not in this, scenario but i've said things that have made people thought think that my relationship is over which is not true i need to really work on that um <laughs> i can do it with a broken heart i think like sonically mm. i think she just means when we saw it in miami by the way when she says due to recent okay events. totally okay good so much so thank you um and like yeah i love the idea of it being like a theater ha- her having to get dressed up it being like a full show that kind of aspect of it and i just love the concept behind the song because i actually think it's so incredible that like she wrote it in regards to the eras in general like the concert. full circle yeah full circle moment like and i just love a full circle moment yeah. you know it's like a breaking of the fourth wall in a song yes and i like that it can apply that. to like i can do it with a broken heart like that's get cheesy but like a boy or just like in your life like what no matter what you're going through like you can keep going and yes you can get through it yes i feel like it's a very relatable song even though it like has to do with her performing i think that we could all kind of use it in some Tweak capacity it. did you guys cry during the show no, but I don't cry. I unfortunately sobbed. Oh, where? Didn't mean to. Um, champagne problem standing ovation. I literally was just like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like sobbing, sobbing. Yeah. I was just so proud of her. Like, yeah, she's just so incredible. So incredible. Like, could you imagine being and also because like she's like a local hometown hero. Yeah. Just being like this local girl who's now selling out stadiums around the world just at the like it's just so incredible to just to watch her. It's so incredible. Honestly, it's a gift. And I'm just glad that we all got to experience it because I fear that, you know, in years coming that like if you didn't get to experience it, like you would be disappointed. Yeah. I've only cried at one concert ever. And who was it? Yes. No. Oh my God. Hannah no. Montana. There was different emotions going on. Joe Bros. No. Come on. It's it's the most obvious answer. It wasn't Joe Bros. Was no. it? Is it a boy? My number band? one. Oh, Ariana. Yeah. Ariana Grande. Like, I like she is my like the way you guys feel about Taylor Swift. Like she is my Taylor Swift. Wow. Um, which I know is like not okay, not not popular. She's obviously one of the biggest pop stars like in the world. But like I think about meeting her and I start crying. Like, Aww. I had a dream last night that I met. I've had many dreams that I meet her. So, yeah, you need to go to the premiere tomorrow to meet her. Oh, yeah. my gosh, you do. Like, she is everything you to do. me. Like, ev- everything and so much more. So, I just, like, the thought that I, like, and I, like, literally teeter in my head. I'm like, when when I meet her, because I know it's going yeah, to happen course, one day. Yeah, of course, of course. Do I go completely fangirl or do I play it cool or somewhere in the middle? I think I have to go somewhere in the middle. I, I think, think she middle. would respect either. Well, I, I, when I say play it cool, there's no way I'm doing that. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, hey, Ari. What? <laughs> 
No, that would have been like a waste. Well, wait, of- do you actually want to hear what happened in my dream last night? I'm sorry. A quick course. nightmare. I've been using this, not an ad, REM Beauty <laughs> lip <laughs> um, for like the past couple weeks. And I'm like loving it. So I had this dream that like I finally got to meet her. And we were at this like event. It was like a wicked event. And I was there. And I was like, oh my God, look, like I have the uh, glossy balm. And I pull it out. And I go to like pull the lip gloss out. And it breaks. And she's like, you broke my, my lip gloss. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my um, gosh. But yeah, the glossy bomb's great. <laughs> the glossy bomb is great. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, Eros was incredible. Yeah, incredible. And I'm so glad we got to see it. And I'm so glad we all were in Miami for it. But I was honestly more stressed out, like, over you going there without a ticket. Like, I was texting you every day, do you yeah. get a ticket? Do you get a ticket? Do you get a ticket? Yeah. Tori w- was really a great soundboard for me. And she was like, you and our friend Kylie were, like, texting me the whole weekend. Because so- our friend Kylie also went to the same show we did. Yeah. With, like, different friends and she was like literally when me and like ariel were outside of the concert it was like 7 30 at this point she's texting me she's like i will give you x amount of money towards the ticket like just get in here i'm like i'm trying <laughs> like but no, it worked out well it, it worked, worked out. out so well the thing is i and alana can vouch for me i never really got nervous never that's insane it was it was honest, what honestly insane because danny and i were getting ready and like she's getting ready with us too like and like not that i had i any just knew qualms. i was gonna get in not that i had any qualms about it but more that i was just like you were like yeah no like i'm going and i was like yeah like the dilution serves well and it really I works need to your advantage yeah i i work concerts really well like i feel like i'm really good at concerts like i don't know how to yeah. i don't know how to translate that i'm just like good at concerts events like I just know how to get in. Like I, and in my head, I'm like, no, no, no. Like when I set my mind to it, I'm like, I'll, I'll be in there. I'll see you in there. Great. Like when we sent you and Danny off, I was like, all right, see you in there. They walked all the way up to like as far as they could go with us. Like we're about to scan in, and they, and then they were like, okay, bye. Walked back the other way, and I was like, oh my god. Like no, Ariel kept saying to me, she was like, oh, well, like if we, there's like this is how we get back to the hotel. I'm like, Ariel, we're not going back to the hotel. Like that's not even in the cards. Well, so by would- the way, it took us to hours and 15 minutes to get from our hotel to before yeah to the concert when it was only a 32 minute drive when did you guys leave like what time four four and where were you saying south beach or miami south South beach Beach. Mm. um and like we were like leaving ample amount of time so that maybe potentially we could get in the merch line um obviously there was no time for merch and danny i mean i really consider myself to be at like another level of swifty you know hierarchy danny is at the top of the list in like a- anyone i know in my personal life um she was like no no drinks no bathroom like we're going sit down identify the seats then maybe like maybe if you're lucky you can get a chicken finger maybe <laughs> but, like seriously like i can't confirm and i was like no da-. like i was like i'm following danny's lead like this is her like it was obviously like my Super Bowl too, but I felt so much more passionately about yeah. it for her. Yeah. So I was like, whatever you need to do. So we like got there, sat down and then Gracie Abrams came on and she was like, okay, like do what you need to do. That was yeah. the only thing I was sad about with like the last minute tickets was that I missed Gracie. But I missed Gracie because it. I'd gotten the merch line and didn't even get merch. <sighs> but, and like at the time I was like, whatever, like I like Gracie. Like right now, as of literally Saturday, I'm in the biggest Gracie Abrams renaissance of my life she's I amazing cannot stop listening i kid you not i listened to the um i love you i'm sorry live uh, i knew you're, i actually knew that's exactly where this was going more like i can't wait for my spotify wrapped yeah because it's completely taken over it's taken over it's completely taken it's over. like moments when those songs come out that i feel bad for people who live in like new york or big cities where they like take public transportation they can't like scream in their car you know what I mean? A thousand percent. That's my favorite place to sing. It's my car. And I also remember too. this summer on Love Island USA. Like, do you guys watch this past season? Yes. Mm-mm. Okay. Well, there was like a moment where like Kayla and Aaron were going through all their stuff. Yes. And someone commented on Instagram like, girls, just wait, please, please, please. Just came out. And like, they didn't even know. Like, oh my this God, song is right. waiting for them on the outside. And it's like, Ugh. they need it so bad. And like, when they hear it. When they hear it, like, they will be cured. That's how I'm feeling right now with Gracie. Like, she, everything I'm like going through my life. That whole album, I'm like, she actually wrote it for me. Like, she wrote it for That's you. That's the best feeling. She wrote it for me. It was for you. That is like literally such an amazing feeling. Feeling so connected to the music, you know? So connected. Connected. 
Q connected. <laughs> That's the full circle right there. <laughs> so let's it. end it on the full circle. Let's end it on the full that. circle. Girls, you are the best. Thank you for Thank having you so us. much for having You're us. You're so welcome. Pimp out the pod. When do you guys release new episodes? How can people find you? And then also pimp out yourself um, individually. Yeah. So we release episodes every Wednesday. And like, just to be really clear, sometimes, sometimes it's Thursday. Sometimes it's Thursday, just depending on the sketch. Uh, but we try to do every single Wednesday. You can find us on anywhere you can find your podcasts, actually, Apple, Spotify, uh, Best of Both Worlds. You can follow us on Instagram or TikTok at the Best of Both Worlds pod. And you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Alana.Palumbo. Wait, is that your TikTok too? Technically, my TikTok is like my username's Alana Wannabe. Oh, okay. And my handle is. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Palumbo. I want to make sure they were going to the right no, place. If you look up Alana Wannabe anywhere, you're gonna find you're it. Gonna it will also be linked below. Great. Okay, and I am just at Popstar Katie on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all the places. If you want to come find me, um, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for having us. This Thank you guys. So much fun. No, so much fun. All right, bye guys. Bye.